Yes. We're not on yet, right? Yeah, well, no, we can start. We'll start right now. One second. Okay. <laughs> Nelly, yes. can you do me a favor on my nightstand? Have some earphones, please. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to get the earphones just so it'll be. Oh, you, you get the earphones. Yeah, we can hear you out there. Okay. Yeah, man, um... appreciate it. <laughs> Yeah, I, um, hold on a second. I spoke with um, I don't remember Woody Rock from Drew Hill. Woody, okay, yes. cool. Man, I haven't seen those guys in forever. He says to say that you have the best popcorn in the studio. Yes, we do. <laughs> yes, we do. We have secret popcorn. Everybody secret. falls in love, not only with the studio, but the popcorn. Oh, okay, so, was this something you should make special, or what was the secret? Uh, yeah. <laughs> can't can't give up the studio secret for the popcorn. Yeah, it's amazing that somebody would he, he would say from years later, say, Oh, just tell him that we loved his popcorn. And I'm like, A lot of popcorn? people would come to the studio and look forward to the popcorn. Oh good. <laughs> yep, they would look forward to the popcorn. Get them through long nights, sessions, <laughs> be okay. sleepy, go make some popcorn. But where where did that come from then? Making again you know, the popcorn stuff. I, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm a popcorn lover. So okay. when I'd be working by myself, you know, I'd say, hey, you know, somebody make me some popcorn. And so then I would make it for myself. And then, you know, as I work with artists, they'd come in, oh, that smells so good. Let me try it. And they say, <laughs> you know, we, one of the guys knows how many bags we went through one night. It's like we have a record of how many, you know, microwave popcorn bags we went through. So wow, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, I don't eat it as much. Okay. That was, that was like, you know, late nineties, early two thousands. So I kind of over the years, of course, you might have cut cut back. <laughs> yeah, I did. was you know. your studio in Atlanta? Is that where you're based? Well, yeah. As as a matter of fact, when we had the listening party for the album, we had it at my old studio, which is now owned by Ti. Oh, he bought it, so he owns it now. I don't, I don't any longer own it, but it's still intact. The way that you know, me and my engineer. Uh, created it. it. It was called Silent Sound, and Ti named it Super Sound. Wow! But it's the same facility, you know, different little, little bit different decor, you know. Yeah. So, so yeah. What? what why so, did you get? Why did you? Why did you get rid of it? It was just kind of a business decision, you know. Okay. I wasn't working that much, and you know, paying staff, and was ready to move on. And said, hey, you know, if I work, I can go out to Faces mm-hmm. Studio or which I ended up doing most of my work out there with him, you know, when we worked together on his albums with After Seven, with whoever, I end up in Los Angeles anyway. So there was just kind of a, one of those decisions. So couldn't find my headphones, so let's roll. Okay, no, no, that's fine, yeah. And But then yeah, also, um, you know, congratulations on the release of the Chris, uh, 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 of, the, uh, of your new album. Um, Thank you, Appreciate How was that. the listening party and how was... Uh, it was great. It was great. It was it was small. I kept it down to, you know, the people that participated, my family and some close friends. Uh, so it was it was cool. Short and sweet. You know, I told him when it was over, I said, hey, I don't own the studio anymore. It's like T.I. is making me pay for this. Like, we got to get out of here. We got to go. <laughs> okay. You know, so it actually made it good because people couldn't linger and loiter around like we normally would. So we had to like to get out. But it was really nice. I appreciated it. And everybody loved the album. And uh, so I'm glad it's over. And they got it behind me. So, yeah, a lot of, it was a lot of fun. A lot of work, but, you know, a lot of fun. So, so cool. promoting an album independently, what, what does it involve now? I mean, you've done a listening party. You've you sort of got it up all on the social media sites, but what's next? I, you know, just not really a lot. I told somebody, they were asking me, oh, what's the big, you know, promotion plan? I said, I don't really have a big plan. I'm not trying to, I'm not an artist, so I'm not trying to blow up. Yeah. You know, I'm not trying to, I didn't do it for sales. You know, Christmas music, like I said, other than Mariah Carey, you know, <laughs> he doesn't really sell. She's the, she's the Christmas queen. Yeah. So I told him it was just really for myself. It truly was for myself. A last body of work. If five people buy it and say, Hey, I bought your album. I love it. Then that's, that's, I'm, I'm ecstatic about that. So it's not about trying to generate all these sales. I just wanted to share it with yeah. the world, but I did it for myself. I'd never, produced a total album myself. I'd never written and produced a whole album by myself. So this was like, you know, something that I wanted to do to see if I could do it. Like when Kenny did Exhale, he yeah. said, well, I just want to see if I can do it. Wow. And I go, oh, I know you can do it. And so he did a great job on Exhale. And over the years, I've always wanted to 
do the same thing. So when the Christmas album idea came about, I go, well, that's the perfect thing for me to do because I love Christmas music and it's, I love writing Christmas music. So a lot of things, you know, were, were checked off the list for this project. So that's it, man. Whatever it does, like I said, it does. If somebody finds a song and plays it, that's great. I'm good. You know yeah. what I mean? I'm totally good with it. Yeah. Uh, is there going to be time for any videos or any? Is it just it? That's it. No. Is that? No. One of the one of the singers actually asked me, Dennis Bettis, who sings a couple of the songs. He asked me about it, and I thought about it. Nah. You know, got to know when to quit. Okay. You know? <laughs> just just let it just let it be there. You know, let it be there. And uh, so yeah, we we did we did discuss it. But it's not out of the realm of possibility. The good thing about the Christmas album is that it'll never get dated. We can do a video next year. Yeah. You know, to maybe revive it, say, hey, since we didn't do a video when we released it this year, let's do a video to one of the songs that I don't know, you know, maybe didn't get a lot of attention or something. So no, no videos. I'm, just, I'm good. <laughs> you know, do some interviews with you and a couple of people. <laughs> yeah. and, you know, let you guys promote it for me. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> Well, you know what? Um, so I've, uh, so I, you know, I've listened to it, and 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 I've sort of changed, sort of. Okay, I've have, I've narrowed it down to my top five. Um, well, five, okay. But but cool. when you think of um, my favorite song on on the album um, is, um, uh, make sure I don't mispronounce it. One Christmas wish. Yeah. And and the reason why. why is that your favorite? Why is it your favorite? What does it make you think of? Um, so my my uh, my father um, came um, passed away um, two years ago, uh, December fourth, mm -hmm. and yeah. he 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 came. He was visiting us here in, in the UK. Um, he, he was diabetic. His sugar levels are high. We took him to the hospital. Mm -hmm. Sadly, got pneumonia in the hospital. He was getting better. Caught COVID in the hospital and passed away in the hospital. So. Um, when I listen, so but the last memory we did have is what Christmas, what he he spent with Christmas before. So when I'm listening to the song, and I could just, it just felt to me that this was a, a somebody who had lost a loved one, a parent, yeah. and they were sort of wishing, you know, just that one Christmas wish. And it just, and I, in fact, when I was listening to it, I just had this video of my just images of my dad and. You know, when I was a kid, and I could just see pictures of my dad right. when I was a kid, and and the different conversations, and mm -hmm. I could just see the video. So that yeah. song just becomes very real, and 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 it's and a timeless song. Um, right. You know, it's like a Lou Ferrandez dance with my father, or Aaron Hall's "I Miss yeah. You." So that was why that song just became yeah. an instant standout. Well, I'll me. tell you this: that song was written for my dad. My dad passed away in two thousand seventeen. Wow. I couldn't find the right male singer to sing it. So I asked Angel to sing it. And once Angel sang it, it just like tugged at my heartstrings. Yeah. And I lived with it. I couldn't unhear Angel singing. Okay. And so it's so I just flipped the lyric to her to yeah, a little yeah, girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the song girl. was written about my father. Ah, uh, see, that's, that's, that's what right. it, so that's why it, it connected you, because it was yeah. written for my dad. He yeah. passed away in 2017. Yeah. You know, he yeah. wasn't sick. You know, he went in for this uh, adjustment on his uh, a heart valve. Yeah. He ended up having a stroke and, you know, he passed away. It was like, oh, wait a minute. My dad was just cutting the grass the other day. Yeah, same he was 92, dad, yeah. 93 years old. He was oh. still driving, going to church, singing in the choir. Mm -hmm. And I drove over and said, oh, it's just an outpatient thing. You know, he'll stay one night. And I go over there and I lose my dad. Wow. So that's what the song is about. So I'm glad that you said that uh, yeah. because it hits me the same way. It's it's about if I had one more Christmas wish, that gift would be yeah. to spend it with him just one one last time. If I had known that, you know. Yeah, what I mean, so, yeah it I'm, is a, it's a very poignant song. Usually, I have to walk out of the room if it comes on because it just it's still, you know what I'm saying? Still well, gets yeah, me. it it did. In fact, you. on on the. Um... Yeah, so my dad's birthday would have been the first of November. He would have been seventy eight or so, seventy seven. Mm -hmm. And and I sort of use a, a mid forty forty second clip using that song, mm -hmm. and it just it, you know it just told the yeah. story just for having the yeah. different images. And so I thought in the story you see it. It's graphic. It's very graphic. And Angel she delivers the vocal so. I mean, like I said, once she did that, and I was married to it, I couldn't I couldn't put a guy on it. <laughs> you know, I had to leave it. 
you know. Would you? So I, I would say if there was ever a video to shoot so that that type of you know you know getting oh, absolutely. You know, yeah because yeah, everybody can relate. It could be an yeah. aunt, uncle, boyfriend, sister, brother. It's yeah. universal. It's what Kenny and I call. It's a universal song. You can plug in your person. You can plug in your dad. Yeah. And everybody can plug their person in. Yeah. So that, and I agree with you. If I did do it, that is the poignant song at Christmas that I would probably do a video too, because it's just so powerful yeah. and it's universal. Everybody relates to that. Whoever that person is that they lost, that they wish they had one more Christmas wish, you plug that person in. So yeah. I agree with you. But yeah. I'm glad that you said that too, because I, <laughs> you know, that, that, that makes me really think about it. Yeah, I, as I said, I do, I do love it, and, and and I don't get, I listen to it as as, as many times. And then the the I love try again, you know. Try again's a good record. Try again's yeah. a really good record. Because I I think it's 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 a throwback type of mm -hmm. track that we don't really hear now, and it just it mm -hmm. it wasn't trying to do too much, and it just mm -hmm. you know, and I like the inter interaction between the male and female singer, and I, I was I think that was I was trying to, you know, like I love Jimmy and Terry, and I said. Okay, this this is my fake attempt at Alex, <laughs> Jarrell, and Alex. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. that's what I that's what I kept in my head of you know going back and forth, making them sound like they're a couple. Yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. Even at the end, I said, okay, you guys say, "I love you, baby." It's like, yeah. "I love you, baby." Yeah, to make yeah. it so that was my fake uh, paying homage to Jimmy and Terry. <laughs> of course, you know I could not do what they do, but that's what it put me in mind of was you know. Uh, Alex and Sherelle doing, I think I, one part in there, I said, let's sing it together. Yeah. <laughs> try, try. So, you know, I hope they don't sue me for doing that, but no. it's just out of, it's out of respect and, and love for their work, to their great work. So that that's what I was thinking of. I was kind of channeling my inner, you know, Jimmy Jam and Terry with Alex and Sherelle. So but it's a good record. It's a fun Yeah, fun it record. is. And, and I, I think like those are the types of records that that aren't um you know like jingle bells they're, they're very much where you can you know it's it's like if you're someone who was trying to tell a story in the middle of mm -hmm. um a war you don't just tell the story of the war you tell a, a story of love in the midst of the war and that's how some of those exactly. songs were that yeah. okay it's christmas but there are relationships that happen people are missing yep. people you so break that's up, why you miss people at christmas you want to get back together you know he sees the girl at the mall you know i want to know can we talk yeah. You know, I got a gift for you. Do you got a gift for me? Yeah. You know, it's it's a it's a it's a love story at Christmas. You know. Yeah. I mean? You know, so, she's yeah. like last year this time we were kissing under the mistletoe. What happened? How did we? How did we not end up together at Christmas? Yeah. You know. So I try to always have that R and B element, but then have a good Christmas story. You know, with it. You yeah. Know what I mean? so, yeah. That's a good record. It's a good fun record. A yeah. Like let, let me see the other one. Um... I, I like what I see in you because it's it's um in, in a way it, it it can take you to one of those um type of um what was the name of the um the 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 um I, I was, I'm saying the Snow Queen but it was the um it was a Disney one with the um mm -hmm. um that could be uh, anything Disney yeah. But it it, it it had that type of stuff. But I I did I did like it didn't remind me too much. It didn't it didn't seem like a Christmas song, but it just felt like it was just a nice. Yeah, it was like uh, it was written uh, a, a young guy named Martin C. Mario Alexander. He writes really great piano pieces and he sent it to me and I couldn't figure out what to do with it. You mm -hmm. know, I couldn't figure out how to make it a complete song. So I said, you know what? So I wrote what I wrote to it and then. I just kind of used it like the old days. Remember the old days when albums would have an interlude? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. little piece that would fade in and fade yeah, yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And go to the next song. Earth, Wind & Fire. Mur Maurice White was great at that. He'd have a little rhythmic thing come in and then it would go away and then all of a sudden we hear, you know, uh, Can't Hide Love. So I just <laughs> used it as like an interlude. Yeah. You know, but it really works because I, where I placed it before Try Again, I think, She's saying what I see in you, you see in me, and then they go to try again. Uh, so I okay. just, I, I never did develop it into a full length song. I ended up loving just the piece. Yeah, no, it, 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 it did. It's very it innocent. Did. Yeah, it did. It did. And I do like the piano part. And, and I think it's, you yeah. know, not doing too much. It was like, okay, just perfect. It's so sweet. It, it's very it's sweet. A, it's a very sweet piece. And she delivers it. She sings with so much feeling and emotion that just makes you. She makes you want to cry. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
her voice makes you want to cry because she she reaches you. You know what I mean? So I love it for just the piece that it is. Like you said, it's not really Christmassy at all. Yeah, yeah. You know? And 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 that's that's part of part of the reasons why I, I love that. And then let me see. Um uh, Christmas with you. Christmas with you, it's a title track, right? Mm. That's that's a title. Was that track. you in the beginning? And no. then oh okay. No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not, I have a couple of pieces. The very beginning of closer to me, the talking part. Okay, not the, the Santa Claus. Part, okay. In the very beginning. Of yeah, okay, closer okay. To me, it says Christmas spirit is all in the air. Yeah, yeah, that was okay. That was you. Okay. That's me. And I had a couple of little little ad lib pieces that I kept that I did on the demo that one of the girls, Tan Smith, who sings said, No, I'll keep your part. I said, okay, but I'm not, <laughs> you know, I wasn't trying to to sing into that degree, you know what I mean? But uh, no, Dennis uh, sings the whole thing. Okay, Christmas with you, uh, and he did a he did a he did a really great job. Yeah. I love I love the title track. You know, I go between Christmas with you and Don't Wait Till Christmas as my favorites. I bounce back and forth on those two. Okay, but yeah, good record, really good. Delivers the message really well. You yeah, know? yeah, I like it, it a lot. And then the final one, out of as I said, it, I mean, oh, great. I'm just talking about the five, top five. Um, uh, your drummer boy. So is that your son? That was my uh, son, DJ. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that was. Uh, I'm really proud of that. Probably more than any song because it's the first thing we've done together in all the years I've been writing music. And he, you know, he works on music as a hobby in his spare time. Okay. So I was actually working on the track, you know, in my little my home studio, and he just busted in the room and started, you know, spitting these rhymes and. And I'm going, oh, that's crazy. I love that. Where's your phone? We need to record this. Where, Dude, get your phone. I don't remember what I said. I don't even remember. <laughs> so I just started recording everything out of the air. So he had all these little bits and pieces. So I went through them. I said, okay, here's your verse. You know, here's the hook. I'll sing the hook with you. I said, now you go finish it. So wow. he went and finished it uh, with, with two guys that I work with in my camp, Tony and Walt. And, you know, he brought it back. I said, oh, man, I love it. You nailed it. I said, I love it. Because I didn't want to take it and water it down. I wanted mm. him to be able to have that freedom. He's a younger cat. Hey, do whatever it is that you do to make it right. Mm. I don't, other than what I did, I don't want to touch it anymore. So he brought it back. Man, I, it, a lot of, it's a favorite song with a lot of people. A lot yeah. of people. So yeah, he did a great job. He's singing on it. He's rapping. You know, he wrote. So I'm really proud that we did that you know, together. It's really, really meaningful to me that we wrote something together, you know, and it's yeah. history, it's music. So yeah, good, good record as yeah, well. I mean, it, at first it was my favorite, you know, because, you know, it was the one that you can remember catchy and it was yeah, different and, and stuff. And, yeah. and I didn't want to like it because I thought, oh no, I don't like that <laughs> music. So I was no. like, oh no, but it's the one I remember this most. But but after, you know, digesting the yeah. rest of the album. It's important. I, I didn't want the whole album to be just everything that I normally do. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's why I think that song, when it comes, and I didn't wait. At first, when I did my first sequence, that song was probably maybe third from last or maybe second to last. But as I listened to the songs, I said, okay, I've given them me. Let's kind of shock them with something that, wow, where did this come from? Like <laughs> yeah. one, one person commented online and said, is this a rap album? Yeah. <laughs> you know, because, you know, Renee, uh, my assistant who does all the graphics and all the promo, you know, she put that out with my son so they thought it was like a rap album it's like no 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 that's just a featured song that my <laughs> son did so i liked it for the variety you know of just having variety you know what i mean yeah. you know i didn't want it to be just all sappy you know i'm a ballad dude so i didn't want it to be full of just <laughs> you know all that so it, it i really love where it is i love it for what it is he did a great job you know what i mean he's, he's a talented kid he's really talented talented yeah talented. I mean, is, is, it was that just a one-off for him, or was he doing? He does some stuff on his own. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, last year he was a part of a, a show on MTV called Buckhead Shore, and you know, I don't know if they had a second season. So he 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 did a lot of TV stuff last year with that, and he did a little music on the show. So he's kind of trying to find his way between, you know, being a TV personality. I do music. That's how these kids are. They do everything. Okay. You know, <laughs> you know branding, clothing. Okay. So that's where he's at. He told me the other day, he goes, I want to be rich, but I just, I bounce around with too much stuff. I go, okay, that's okay. But at some point you got to eliminate something, DJ, you know, and find <laughs> a couple of things that's going to make you some money. 
you know. <laughs> so so he's cool. He'll 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 find his way. He, he's talented, so he'll he'll find his way. And uh, the narration, my older daughter Darielle is doing the Christmas memory. Oh yeah, yeah, she's yeah, yeah. remembering. And I told her just, uh, I said, "What do you remember about Christmas?" We were on the phone one day, and you know, she didn't know I was recording. Oh, that's and so right. I, I took it. Yeah, I took it, and then I put music behind it. You know, edited it. And she hadn't even heard it until the listening party. She just started bawling. She didn't even, wow. you know. And it was funny because on the way to the party, she goes, did you ever use those pieces that I was telling you about? I said, nah, it didn't work. I said, it was all distorted. <laughs> you know, so she goes, oh, yeah, I was wondering. So when it came on, she was like, oh. and she just came to me and hugged me, started crying. So wow. that's my oldest daughter. The album cover is my youngest daughter, Hope, took the photo for the album okay, cover okay yeah and so i have uh, you know my whole family's involved my older brother uh co-wrote uh the day of christmas with me you wow. know he does beats and he had this beat come to my house and i was like i didn't like the song i, said, well, I like the beat i could probably <laughs> turn turn that into something so that's that he ended up being a part of of a song too so that's kind of cool everybody was was involved you know uh so that that made me really happy that everybody's involved with it you know, and I dedicated the album to my dad. So it, it has a lot of meaning to me, you know. Yeah, as I said, it, it, it is a beautiful album. And, and you know, and, and, I, and I know that, um, um, yeah. And, then, and I think I, I do like the fact that you, you're putting it out to celebrate, but not like, okay, I'm trying to make a million bucks out of this because no. it, it has a very different perspective when, is when, you're, when you're putting it out. Did, has it... Did it give you an appetite to do more in different things, or was it like no. okay? <laughs> One of the guys, Dennis, he keeps he like, oh, you need to do this, you know, like an R and B album and use all of us. I was like, no, nah, Dennis, that's it, done. Oh, oh, no, no, so, no, why so? <laughs> you got to know when to stop, man. You can't go too far. You got to know when to stop. You know, the Christmas album is magical. You know, mm. all those songs happen magically they didn't happen at the same time i wrote them over two and a half three years then oh, if you go try to do something for real then you're trying too hard that's how i always look at it it happens naturally for me yeah. you know what i mean so uh but no that's it you know it's it's like to me that last body of work as far as an accumulation of songs you know what i mean so i'm happy man i'm really happy with it you know really satisfied but, but then you, you know a lot of us would say wow there's not enough quality r&b and, and and quality music out there that's uplifting and edifying and um because you know those who dominate the airwaves are paid by the labels and, and they're pushing out whatever it is for the uh for a generation but it, I, and i guess producers songwriters like creators like yourselves have the opportunity to say okay we can just make a nice body of work and put it out in the ether for everyone to, to enjoy but it must be a lot of work, though. So I guess that's probably a lot of work. Yeah. yeah, it was a lot of work. I worked on that all summer. I started early. I think I started maybe in February or so, just kind of going through the songs, going through old tracks, you know, concepting it. It originally started out with me saying, I'm going to use all my favors that I've never used in the music business. I'm going to call Tony Braxton. I'm going to call Babyface. I'm going to call Kim Lattimore, Johnny Gill. Kevin, I'm gonna call all these people. And then I was like, that'll take 10 years to get done. <laughs> all those schedules and egos and flying here. And my daughter said, no, 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 daddy. It'd be more special to do it the way that you, that you originally wanted to do it. So, you know, give some unknown people an opportunity to shine a little bit where they otherwise maybe not, wouldn't be given that opportunity. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, I, I like the way that I did it. You know what I mean? So it's, yeah. it's, really, I think it's a cool story, you know, because you have unknown people that are just as talented as the people who we know. You know what I mean? Yeah. I so. mean, it was, a, I can't remember the song now. Uh, um, and I wrote it down, but there was one song that I thought, oh, I can imagine boys to men singing it. Oh, I can't remember what it is. Now. Well, some people comment on uh, Don't Wait Till Christmas as they Don't think that that could be Christmas. between that and Christmas with you as a boys to men song. Okay. You know, and I go, yeah, I could kind of hear Juan Ye singing yeah. uh, Christmas with you. Yeah, uh, I think it was Christmas with you that I could, I, I heard it and I thought, oh, this is a, I can, I could see boys to men sort of jo joining right. in, in, in there. And, and I can imagine if, say, Tony and Johnny Gill all sang, but the thing oh, yeah, is they would, that yeah, they would have sounded, they would have killed everything, but just the time that it would have taken yeah. with their schedules. It's a Christmas project. 
they're going to be like, ah, it's a Christmas project. We've done Christmas <laughs> music before. No, we love you, Daryl, but I ain't got no time to be doing that. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. you know, this way, it was a lot of fun. You know, people came from their jobs, came from work. Wow. They were appreciative. They worked hard. Uh, it was fun for everybody. Everybody was excited. You know what I'm saying? Hey, really, the spirit of it stayed throughout. I had no hiccups. You yeah. know what I mean? Because everybody was happy, you know, to 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 be there, and it was uh, it, it happened the way it was supposed to happen. You and know, it is different, uh, though, that if you had say Sony saying, "Okay, yeah, Dad, we're going to back you on, on on doing a Christmas album." So who do we want us to fly in? So that it's right, it's but not only different. yeah, but not only that. Then I'm going to have to deal with their managers, the record company, <laughs> on releasing it. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a it's a lot of red tape and a lot of particulars that people don't know that would have gone into that. You know what I'm saying? This way, I controlled it. I had no trouble. It was, everything was smooth. Mm. And so it, it happened the way that it was supposed to happen. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, Face is playing guitar on Throwback Holiday. You know, people don't know he's a guitar player. When we grew up, he played guitar and I played drums. Who's this? You know, Babyface, he's playing guitar oh, on Throwback Kenny. Holiday. Oh, yeah. is he? Is he? Okay. Yeah. I didn't realize he got involved in it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's playing guitar for me. I sent him the track and he laced it. He killed it. And he's oh. playing rhythm guitar on Throwback Holiday. OK. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You look through the credits, uh, you'll see it. Renee can get you the full credits. Yeah, yeah. No, she, 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 she didn't. No, I, I didn't. Yeah, OK. Yeah. yeah. He played guitar on it for me. And so that was really good. And it sounds really good. People don't know he, he's a guitar player first. You know? Yeah. Um, although we see him mainly, um, we do see him more, more on, the, on, on his acoustic, but not, not an electric. He's an electric guitar. When we grew up playing in clubs and, and our high school bands, he's an electric guitar player and he wasn't the lead singer. You know, oh, we were always okay. in band where we had a lead singer. Okay. You know what I mean? So even in the deal, he wasn't the lead singer. We had two lead singers and Kenny just happened to sing two occasions. That was the- <laughs> <laughs> but we had two lead singers, Carlos and D, who were the lead singers of the deal, you know? <laughs> so okay. people, and they'll, they'll see him with a guitar, they go, well, you know, he played guitar. He yeah, plays yeah. very well, plays really good guitar. Electric uh-huh. guitar, solo, you know what I mean? So yeah, he's, he's a very good guitar player. Very good. Yeah. Did, didn't you attempt to, you didn't want to sing in any of the tracks then yourself? Because you no. did say you do um, a lot of background singing. I sing a lot of backgrounds. My voice is, is in a lot of backgrounds. I, I did it just how, Kenny and I would do it. We sing the demos for Tevin or Tony or After Seven. I'd go and Kenny go, okay, go in and sing the demo. I'm like, okay. And I'd go in and sing a couple of tracks. Okay, that's good enough. They can learn it. You know, so, but a lot of backgrounds, Kenny and I, on a lot of the records, we've sung backgrounds on a whole lot of the records and we wouldn't give ourselves credit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I sang background on Breathe Again. I said, well, don't put my name down. I don't want credit for it. And Kenny go, okay, go sing it. Tony's not singing it how you sing it. So if you go sing it. All right, oh, okay, I'll go sing it. But don't put my name down. So a lot of records over the years, mm. whether it's Don't Be Cruel or, you know, uh, we, we always have one of our voices or both in the background, always. Now, because I can we, always we hear Kenny. A pattern. We I can always a hear pattern. Kenny. Yeah, I can hear Kenny. Kenny. We, yeah. yeah, and the reason is because we want them to follow the, the feel of what we created. You know what I mean? So he'll lay the foundation. It's like, okay, just do what I did. And then we'll sort of edge their voice up okay. over Kenny's voice to get their sound. Yeah. But we always lay a pattern or what we call the foundation of the rhythm. This is how it goes. Sing it with this rhythm. Sing it with this feel. You know, mm-hmm. and then, like I said, we'll take it out. Or sometimes we may just blend it, you know, very, very little. But one of us is always there. You know uh... what I mean? In, in the record. So I did a lot of backgrounds for this one. A lot of backgrounds um, on this record. You know, so it's cool. And I, and I like to do backgrounds. I could never be a lead singer. It's too much work. Okay. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> it's too much work. Yeah. It's like, but then, I, and, and I guess the, um, yeah, because I, I, and I guess because I didn't really hear, we don't listen, have the backgrounds in uh, as we used to. So it's like the thing of like, right. can we talk, you know, that type of, yeah. um, um, we, it, it doesn't, it seems that music kind of went away from. Right. It of, did. And see, that's my funnest part. My funnest part is when the song's written, okay, now let me come up and make up these background parts. Oh, so okay. Once the song is done, I can sit back and just listen to it in the car or in the bed. And all of a sudden, I start hearing the background parts. That part is fun to me. 
I love doing the background parts. It's so much fun to me. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, you know? And uh, so Kenny and I, we love it. He's, he's a master at it. He hears notes. Oh no, I hear this note. I'm like, where the hell did you pull that <laughs> note from? He's a, he'll keep going. You're sitting there and you don't know where he's going, but you know, at the end, when he plays all the notes, it's like, damn, that's incredible. <laughs> you know, he, he is the master at backgrounds. He, and so he's a bad boy. It's a bad boy. Yeah. I learned a lot, learned a lot from him. Learned a lot. So, yeah. so now that you you finished the album, what's next then? Because you can see your friend Kenny is, you know, go around promoting his new album and stuff. Oh, yeah, he's, his... he's on the move. He's doing great. You know, he's doing great with his album. I don't really have a, I don't have a musical next. Only thing that I've gone back and forth on is a book, you know. And so I do have an idea of a book and tell stories about some of the, some of our biggest songs and tell the stories of maybe how they were developed, that they have a good story. Like End of the Road, everybody knows that Kenny wanted to keep it when we finished it. Mm. And we were like, no, you can't keep it. Boyce the Man has to do it. And he recorded it and he said, okay. So little stories are tidbits that people don't know. There are stories behind a lot of the records. You know what I mean? So I thought about writing a book based on my childhood uh, and a lot of the big records that we did and give people some of the behind, because I love behind the scenes stuff. You know, I love documentaries and I love hearing that story that, you know, that I would never would have known when somebody tells you something. Yeah. So uh, one of the greatest stories I heard was Gamble and Huff tell the story of me and Mrs. Jones. And they would go to lunch. They would go to lunch every day from the studio. And they noticed across the street after some time that this guy and girl would show up at the same time, same place. Then they would leave and go separate ways. Wow. And that's how they came up with me and Mrs. Jones. We got a thing go, going on. We'll meet, same place, same time, same cafe. She'll go her way, I'll go mine. It's like, that's just a great story. <laughs> God, that is the greatest story about a song. Yeah. So I have some stories, not as great as that, but I have some pretty good stories about some of the songs that we've written. You know, so I thought about a book from a different angle. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, the show, you know, just uh, talking about, you know, different songs and that kind of stuff. You know, a lot of people's favorite songs and you didn't know that this occurred when we did it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So other than that, I don't have a project right now. It's just like ride the rest of the year out, get through the holidays. <laughs> you know, I'm good, man. Good. So it, it wouldn't be like, OK, you know, maybe that sort of um, getting my favorite things like a Tony or Johnny and like, I, even though it may take two years. But nah. We can, yeah. <laughs> nah. that's that was all, that was the only that was only for the Christmas album. Mm. You know, other than that, there's nothing that um, record wise that I have that I'd like to really do. You know what I mean? So uh, so I think it's outside of music, whatever it is, like the book would be a great thing to do. Um, so, yeah, but I don't have anything musically that, you know, um, you know, that I would do. I tell people I'm really kind of retired unless Kenny calls. <laughs> <laughs> did you do any help him with the... the, uh, the no, the, the... no, he did it all. He, uh, he actually used, he said, well, you know, the first single is I took Can We Talk and I sort of flipped it and LMA wrote some words. So he says, you're a writer on it. I go, okay, that's cool. So, but I didn't physically go and work with him you know, so I just have my writers uh, portion on Keeps on Falling, which they did a great job. That's a really yeah, good record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But always he did it. You know, he did it. He, he's been working on it for forever. He calls like, oh, yeah, I'm going to the studio with this girl. I'm going to go in the studio <laughs> with this girl. I'm like, OK. You know, so it's doing really well for him. So I'm, I'm really happy about that. Really, really cool. You know, very cool thing for him. How does he? What do you? How do you think he feels about the how him to promote it? Because he has to go all to, everywhere to just to really get give it life. Because it's, it's really, uh, you know, he knows that's part of the gig. You know, he's been doing it a long time. You know, he he knows what it takes, and you know, he's not necessarily always favorable favorable, but he'll do whatever it takes to promote his 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 music. Yeah. You know what I mean? So he's always been a trooper. You know, with that kind of <laughs> stuff. So he'll no, he'll go. He'll grind it out, man. He'll, he'll, and that's what he's been doing. He, I talked to him the other day. He's been in New York doing some promotional stuff. And he's got a couple of dates coming up. So he'll do a couple of dates in between. Then he'll go do 
promotional stuff. You know what I mean? So uh -huh. he did the Today Show. He did Jennifer Hudson. He did. He's been doing all. He's been all over the place actually. Well, so, yeah, is, he works hard. Hard with. It was thinking about that. Would it be ever possible that you would then do a showcase of your album with your singers then as a, you know, all of them performing the songs and it just I, like. I a, yeah, I don't know where. I don't know what the event that would cause that. So right now I say no. But if someone said, hey, we'd like to feature one of the artists. It's like, OK, well, that's between you and the artists because I don't sing. <laughs> No, you no, no. I mean? it, it it would be almost like um, you know, getting a venue it could be a church, it could be anywhere. Almost yeah. like the uh, you you had your listening heard, party, but it would have been you. like you get a band, and then yeah. everyone comes and sings comes out their and part. sings their song. Yeah, and it's recorded, and it's just more of a you yeah. know that and each and actually the video becomes can even become yeah. part of it because they you you just get a camera crew and they're filming yeah. the whole thing. Yeah, I don't know. I just I don't I just don't think past the record. Yeah, you know what I, mean? I, I really don't. I do not think past the record. Okay. You know, maybe if I were an artist, I'd have a different mindset, a creative mindset. But I'm like, I make records. Yeah. That's what I do. That, that's my job. I stay in my lane. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to be P Diddy and get no, out there. No, and, no, no, it's not that. No, it, it, it is. It, so. it, but it, it would. It, it would. It would be. The, almost like an unplugged version of the album, but it's like, a, yeah, I okay. Like, I do like that idea when you said it. it would be like an unplugged version, acoustic guitar and piano, you know, Mario yeah. could play the piano and they could come up and just, you know, so that that's an idea, but I don't know. I think it would have to be an event of some kind. No, I don't know. It, you, you, you can get the kids, they can, you, you, the church buildings, there's anywhere, you just yeah. get family and friends and everyone says, come on, you, we're just going to do a live version of the yeah. album. And, so and when I get filmed. bombarded, I'm going to blame you. Because <laughs> yeah. this is your idea. <laughs> yeah. So if people start blowing me up about it. I'm going to say, no, this wasn't my yeah. idea. <laughs> no. it would, it, yeah, it's a good, you know, it's for us to put it, you know, because it, it, it's, um, yeah, it, cause it's, it's just a, it's a beautiful thing to be able to, yeah. to be able to I do, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. So at least we, you know, well, all the artists are amazing singers, and and especially if they're if they're local, they would have, you know. It, yeah, it would be probably... easy to pull together because everybody, I think, but Jr. I think Jr. lives in Baltimore. Uh, he, he sings on closer to me, uh, but you know, he's always in Atlanta, so uh, it would be it would be easy to pull it together. You know, yeah. everybody's local. You know, of course, Atlanta's filled with churches and different yeah ven ben, ben, venues. Ben. So. That's an idea. I'll, I'll keep it way back there in the back of my mind. <laughs> yeah. Way, way back there. Yeah, yeah. So the, the question I, that I did have, because a lot of people who who watched the interview um, um, that, 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 you know, that loved everything that you you had and said, um, they, they, I didn't realize that you, um, that you discovered Destiny's Child? I... I don't like to take <laughs> the full credit. Okay. Uh, uh, but in a roundabout way, yeah, that's one of the stories that I'll tell in the book. It's really a great story. Uh, uh, my relatives on my, on my son's side, my oldest daughter's side, actually found it. Hey, we got these little girls. I'll give you the short version. We got these little girls. You got to see them. So they sent me like a videotape. Back then it was a VHS tape. Mm -hmm. And they sent me a tape. I go, wow, these little girls are incredible. They were dancing, they were singing. And so I flew to Houston to see them. And I you know, got a hotel room just so they could come up and audition. And I took my video camera. I was like, wow, they're really incredible. I think at the time they may have been, I don't know, 13, 14, okay. maybe, I can't remember. And so I signed them to my production company, uh, at the time, they were called Girls' Time, and Matthew, Beyonce's dad, managed them. And I brought them to Atlanta, and I changed their name to the Dolls because they were so cute. They remind <laughs> me of little dolls. So I named them. I, I I named them the Dolls, and they were under the production company for oh two and a half, maybe three years. You know, tried to get a record deal, tried to get a record deal. Had auditions, had showcases, and finally Sylvia Rome. Loved them. She flew down from New York and she loved them. And so I did a deal with Electra. And I can be honest that at the time, I wasn't, not that I'm a savvy businessman now, 
I was really just a producer and writer mm-hmm. and I didn't handle the situation well. I didn't have enough under my belt. You know what I mean? And so long story short, me and Matthew, we butted heads. We couldn't decide on this, decide on that. And, you know, they moved on from me and ended up going to, of course, Columbia at the time. And uh, the rest is history. Wow. So but they're, they're like daughters to me. I actually met with Beyonce when she was pregnant with her first child. Uh, she goes, hey, I'm doing a documentary. And I know you probably got some pictures and video. I said, yeah, I've been holding it for you. She goes, well, you come, <laughs> she goes, well, you come to New York? And I said, absolutely. So she, she flew me to New York. And my engineer had transferred all the video onto you know, the computer on a hard drive. And so she said, we had a lot of stuff, but it, it melted in storage. Oh. So nobody has any footage of me when I was little. I said, well, I got all that footage that we did in the basement rehearsing at my house and the showcase that they did. And, uh, and ironically, when we did the showcase, nobody liked them. Nobody liked them. I was so disappointed. I was so hurt. I had spent so much money, outfits and staging and hair and all that stuff. And I had this big showcase and nobody liked them. And I was like, wow, I can't believe that. You know, and at the time you got to remember it was hat to the back baggy clothes, crisscross, mm. TLC. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. These girls were beautiful. They were, they had sexy clothes on. Oh, those little girls are too sexy. They're, they shouldn't be wearing that stuff. <sighs> Not really, but I knew Beyonce was a star. She could sing. That's why I mm. signed them. I said, this kid can sing. She's incredible to be that young. So I had the showcase and nobody liked them. Clive Davis didn't like them. Wow. Puffy didn't like them. Wow. Kenny didn't like them. Oh, goodness. Uh, Gerald Busby liked them but I couldn't put a good enough deal together with Gerald Busby at Motown. And then finally Sylvia liked him. But anyway, yeah. uh, the edited version is they ended up leaving me and I met with Beyonce. We sat there for four hours and I played all this video and showed these pictures. She was in tears and couldn't believe it. And we had a really good talk. And I told her a lot of the things that, you know, that were going on when they were kids and and, you know, we just didn't. And I ended up talking to Matthew as well. We, we really should have worked together better. But, you know, I wanted to be the boss and he was the boss of the girls. So we were just like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> neither one of us wanted to release our reins as being the boss. And, yeah. you know, looking back on it, we really should have been uh, really more business minded. But I didn't have that business sense back then. You know, I was a songwriter. I was a producer. And so uh, they left. And I think that it happened. I told her, I said, it happened how it was supposed to happen. I said, if I was the stepping stone, then, okay, if that's what I was to the girls, okay. Because I was happy for them. I was really happy for them because they deserved to. They were talented. I signed them. That's why I signed them. So I never was bitter. I even told her when they had their fallout and all the girls were getting fired or they were getting rid of girls, people were calling me. Five Magazine, Rolling Stone. And I wouldn't do one interview. Because I said, well, no, I'm not going to throw any dirt on it. I said, I'm happy for the girl. So I don't, well, we know they were with you when they were little. I go, yeah, but I don't have any dirt for you. So no, thank you. I don't want to, I don't want to. And I told her that. She said she appreciated it. And so, I, I mean, I, I love them. I love her. She's phenomenal. Uh, and that's that was my dealing with them. So I don't take the credit that I discovered them. I say I was a stepping stone. Yeah. You know, and I endorsed them. When Columbia called me and said, hey, we're thinking about signing them. We know they're, they were with you. Is there something we need to know? I said, no. I said, they're talented. I said, sign them. And yeah. I told Beyonce, I said, I didn't think you were going to blow up like that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but, you know, I was, I was very happy for them. And she said she remembers all the meetings, all the pep talks I used to have with them. She mm-hmm. said, I remember everything you used to say. She said, you're gonna, you have to give up your fame. You have to give up your life. And she was telling me she wishes she could go to the mall and shop normally. She wishes she could take her nephews to the beach. She can't go nowhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I said, wow, I just never thought that was going to happen in that way. And she goes, oh, I remember all those meetings you had. You would tell us all that stuff. You know, so they were around Usher. They were around TLC, Monica. They were around all these other people that we were working with. So they adapted the old school work ethic. That's why she's where she is, because she comes from an old school work ethic. Mm. She works hard on music. And then she, like, like us, she was, okay, I did that. How can I outdo that? So she adapted that mentality like we did. Okay, yeah, that's a cool song, but we got to write something better than that. You ne- never, never, never being satisfied, wow. you know, 
It's not about money, about yeah. can I do it again? Let me see if I can top what I did do. And she comes from that, her and Usher come from that, uh, from that mold of being around us when they were 12, 13 years old. Mm. You know, so I'm so, like I said, I'm so proud of her. You know what I mean? Very proud, very, very proud of that girl. So I told her, you know, we sat for like four hours just talking, looking at pictures and old video. They were in my basement rehearsing. And she used a couple of pieces in her documentary wow. uh, that she did. And she gave me credit. Somebody told me, I didn't even know. <laughs> she gave me a video credit because I, you know, I gave her the footage. So it's a great story. But there's yeah. no so much more in between that mm. I want to say for the book. Yeah, so, no, but yeah, no. And to understand, I, I spent an hour interviewing Matthew and he is a strong personality. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he is. He, he did. He did a he did a great like I said you have to give people like him Joe Jackson yeah uh, you know Brandy Norwood's mom you have to give those momagers and managers because they identified the talent they identified yeah. that their kid was talented so give yeah. him that credit yeah. give Ike Turner the credit give him that credit yeah he was crazy <laughs> give him give him that credit for knowing and seeing what he saw to push them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now, what happens after that? Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> I ain't got nothing to do with that. Yeah. But I, I do say give them that credit for having that vision when their kid was uh, when their kid was young. You know what I mean? So, yeah, happen how it's supposed to happen, man. I, I yeah. always believe that. I was blessed beyond my wildest dreams. And so it happened the way it was supposed to happen. I was never bitter because I was doing well myself. And so mm. I was like, OK, well, I missed. I missed on that. It's OK. I'm OK. Yeah. Now, if I never did anything, hell, I'd probably be done jumped off a bridge or something, <laughs> or something you know, yeah, yeah, the, you know, kicking myself. But, yeah. uh, I, was, I was okay and had done okay, and I've done okay in my life. I'm satisfied for what I've done. And, and I am a believer that it happens the way that it's supposed to happen. You yeah. know, that's the way it's supposed to be, you know. But yeah, that's my... Destiny's Child story. And, and <laughs> well, I think the thing, because I, I think after spending you know almost an hour and a half with you last time, and and knowing that you um your approach to you know th this is my my lane, and I'm not I don't want you to step out. I can imagine the pressures of trying to become like oh let me do what L A Reid's doing now because you exactly know, it is, yeah and and not a knowing absolutely, but I wasn't ready. Hmm. I didn't have the knowledge. And the mistake I made too was not calling on him and Kenny because I, I wanted to do it on my own. I wanted to show them that I could do it, you know? And so what came out of it was them saying, you have an eye for talent. You identified her, you identified that kid that she was a star. And I said, yeah, I know talent. And I didn't quite know how to develop it and get it to that level like they did at LaFace, but I could identify talent. You know what I mean? So, you know, like I said, just didn't have that experience. And, you know, hindsight is what it is. Like they say, if I could do all over again, yeah, I would have I would have leaned on them. But I wanted them to be proud of me for doing it on my own. You know okay. what I mean? Yeah, well, so Kenny did the way to take sale on his own and, and stuff. So exactly. I can imagine. Yeah, there you go. You know, and so that was my premise for it. I got to do it. I wanted to be successful. But, you know, I just I didn't have the experience, you know, at the time. You know, and I, I couldn't let go of it. I should have let go and said, hey, I do need help, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And yeah. so, but it, like I said, uh, they ended up being successful, which was which was great. They have, they have and Beyonce, of course, doing what she's doing. And Kelly is great, you know. So, yeah, they're like daughters to me when I see them. And the fact they that you can still have a relationship because, you know, so many of these uh, artists would say, now he did a dirty, he took a, you know, he signed no. us for this luck. And so that's, that's yeah. always the, to your, no, your she, I was, I was, I was glad to hear her say she remembered all the meetings and the things that I told them when they were young. I appreciated it. She appreciated that I held on to this uh, footage and photos yeah. just for her. Cause I knew she'd call one day. Wow. And uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I was like, I'll, I'll just save it for her. She'll call one day. And yeah. So we sat there and we, we, we went through a lot of things that occurred personally, you know, cause they were young, man. They were young. They were, they were, they were 13 young, years old, 14 years old. Wow. They were young. And ironically, when they finally came out and hit, they hit because they were young and sexy. The thing that I tried to do. So I always say they were, I was a little ahead of the time, you know, cause once hat to the back and the baggy clothes played out and they came on, it was like, wow, 
you know what I mean? It had, it had changed by that time. I said, well, that's what I tried to do. And everybody said, <laughs> they were too sexy. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. hey, it, 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 it happens the way it's supposed to happen. You know, yeah. it. it's a good story. Like I said, it's a really good story. So, it, cool. The, the other question they said was, um, is it K.O. that used to? K.O., yeah. Yeah, so everyone says, uh, ask him about K.O. because he used to. He, he used to be part of the, the team as well, but who, yes, who he was K.O.? K.O., uh, his real name is Kevin Roberson. He was the bass player in the deal. Uh, and K.O., oh, my God, K.O. plays on my, 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 rock with you. <laughs> you name it, K.O. plays bass. One of the greatest session bass, just a great bass player. So that's his first role is playing bass. He's played bass on, man, probably these records that I you see back here. Yeah. Probably 90% Kale's playing bass. Okay. So, but Kale and I were a production team in the beginning. LA and Kenny put Kale and I under their wing to be grooming us to be the next duo of producers. And, you know, Kale just didn't have the interest to that degree that I did. Okay. You know, as, as writing all the time, recording all the time, and eventually I ended up being on my own. But originally it was Kale and I, so talented. He sings, he writes, uh, but he didn't have the same kind of, I don't know the word, but you know what I mean? Just that. Yeah, yeah. Did, did, did know, he prefer he, just playing on? on yeah, pre- pre- yeah, playing, you know, go, like go writing a little bit, mm. you know, that kind of thing, do some sessions. And he was kind of cool. Like the <laughs> other guys in the deal, they, they, they were really talented as writers, but eh, I don't feel like writing. Like, okay, well, we're going to write. You know, we wrote, you know, Kenny and I was 24-7. You know, we go to bed, we wake up, we, we write. So, Kale, you know, so eventually I kind of started working on my own. And, you know, like I said, that's the way it happened. And, you know, it was, uh, it was a bit. He did some records with me. He and I did My, 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 the lead vocals. We did The Boys Style My Heart. Wow. We worked with Paula Abdul together uh, early on after seven. We did, we did a few records in the beginning together. You know what I mean? So really talented. He's a really talented guy. Really great ear. Uh, just one of those cats that like, ah, you know, if I do it, it's cool. If I don't, <laughs> yeah. you know. And, and that's what yeah. makes them great is that then, that, that, you know, they're not, you know, then they're not thinking, oh, I can get more publishing and stuff. It, it comes. Yeah, everybody's not the same. You know, everybody's uh, the same. Clarence Avon said, you can't make somebody want to make some money. <laughs> Clarence Avon said that's my goal yeah that's a, that's a good saying Clarence because you can't you know and for me it wasn't money it was just the passion of being a songwriter loving to write songs the money was just like the perk of I don't know working hard like oh wow that's a nice check okay what's that? Where you, you know so it's just you know it wasn't the same passion for writing that Kenny and I had you know it's just we 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 met writing at 15, 14 years old, you know, wanting to write songs. So yeah. it just was instilled in us, instilled in us as ch- as kids, childhood, you know, wanting to be a songwriter, yeah. you know. So, and everybody doesn't have that drive. They have another drive or something else. Yeah, you like know? LA, he decided, okay, after yeah. a while he wanted to start exactly. producing. Exactly. Yeah. The yeah. Executive, running a record company, finding artists, like, oh, you can have that. I can't go into no office every day. <laughs> yeah. I can't do that one. <laughs> You know, so, yeah, that was that's a talent that he had, a gift that he had, you know, and he's very good at, it. you know, he's, he just he had that knack. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, everybody has their thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So the other one they asked again was um, the first artist on the face, Damon Dane. Damien Dane. Damien Dane. Um, Damien Dane was like our version of Ashford and Simpson. Wow. Yeah, Damien was a great writer, just so talented, had mad vibe. And Dia Dane, her name was Dia. Uh, I can't remember Dia's real name. I think it was Deborah. Her real name was Deborah. So they were like a, a, and if you even listen to the album, there's still a couple of songs on that album that are crazy that we wrote. You know, Exclusivity, we had a song called Write Down To It, About It. And it, I, I was amazed that it didn't take off. I don't know why it didn't take off. Wow. But that was our first act. We were so excited. And I don't just one of those things, you know, hey, it's music. You know, you put all your heart and soul into it. Didn't happen. But they were called Damien Dane. And there's still a couple of songs on there. If you ever can look it up, 
it's a really good album, a really mm-hmm. good album that really didn't, you know, didn't do anything. Nobody really heard it. Uh, just didn't happen. So we just kind of kept grinding and kept signing and, you know, everything doesn't hit, you know yeah. what I mean? So, but that's, you know, a lot of people don't remember Damien Dane, but I loved them. They were, like I said, they were like our Ashford and Simpson, you know, uh, very talented, both of them. And they all, they, they actually tragically passed away within a year of each other on the same day. Yeah, that, 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 yeah, and and I think people yeah. do. I think that's the part that people remember, and and I guess mm-hmm. conspiracies and stuff. But yeah, um, mm-hmm. yeah, did they, they didn't stay as long on on the face? Yeah. Uh, they stayed as long as they were alive, mm-hmm. and I'm saying that they passed away at very young ages. Wow. You know, tragically, both of them within a year to the day to the exact yeah. day. Wow. Yeah, it was really eerie. You know, but I love them. They were good people. They were creative. They were great writers. Uh, we found Deborah in California. I don't know who found her, but she was she started in doing backgrounds for us in Los Angeles. And then, you know, we ended up bringing her here. And I forget how we had met Damien. I can't remember. But he just was he just had mad vibe. He was just like from his hair to his clothes. <laughs> yeah. He was he, he was he was very stylish, you know, <laughs> and sort of kind of ahead of his time. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. But yeah, you make me want to go look it up again and listen to it because my favorite song was called Right Down to It. Oh, such a great, a great song, great ballad. Damien delivers it. Just a, I, I can hear it. I said, man, that's a bad song. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. Good group. Just didn't happen, but really talented, talented people. You know? Yeah. Some, uh, uh, yep. Talon said that uh, Chili danced for them. Um, yeah, Chili was dancing. That's how we found Chili. They were rehearsing. And we went to the rehearsal and this little cute little girl was dancing and she'd walk around. I can sing. Y'all want to hear me sing? I can sing. Y'all want to hear me sing? We're like, I want to hear you sing. Get out of here. You're a dancer. Get out of here. And so I remember being uh, at LA's house, we were sitting around and they were trying to find the third member. And somebody said, what about that little cute girl that was like talking about she could sing? You know? Hey, there you go. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know, great personality. And they're like, okay. Yeah, she's cute. <laughs> you know okay so, so that's like... uh yeah that was her thing want to hear me sing i can sing i can sing for you but no we don't want you to sing for us. And, uh, see the other crazy question funny is... girl crazy <laughs> funny. that girl's funny she could be a comedian that girl's funny. is that chili chili oh my god yeah she's always have dancing you, have you in tears yeah in tears. <laughs> my goodness but how yeah. was it going from the because when they first came out, because I was in Nigeria when they came out with, you know, the sort of the baggies, the mixed crops, they were just mm-hmm. that sort of almost like hip hop kind of stuff. And then they mm-hmm. go from 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 Ooh and a Crazy Sexy Tip to um, Crazy Sexy Cool and almost mm-hmm. like a, wait, wait, did, did you guys get involved with the image change or was it just like, yeah, whatever, we just write the songs like, no, not, or... no, I, I didn't. I wasn't an image guy. Kenny in LA had a pretty good eye. I never had an eye for image, but I, a lot of that was TLC. You know what I'm saying? They knew what they wanted. They knew what they didn't want. They didn't want to be what like what everybody else was doing. Wow. I remember we were in the studio once and uh, they were saying, Ellie and Kenny were saying, well, Missy Elliott has this song. You know, she wants y'all to hear. I remember t was going, well, it's a, it's a hit. She said, but it's not a TLC song. She said, I don't want to do it just because Missy Elliott wrote it. And I was like, wow, I was just listening. I was like, I like that. She didn't want to take the, the hit because she said, yeah, it's a hit, but it doesn't sound like TLC. And she didn't want to do it just because she wanted, in other words, she wanted it to be genuine. She wanted it to come from them. Yeah. She wanted it to be a TLC song. And I admired her honesty about that because it wasn't about just grabbing another hit record. And Missy was hot at the time. Yeah. You know, and I remember, but so they they always knew what they wanted. They were creative and those girls were like, they were just like so musical, but their personalities just dripped of personality individually. And that's what made them really great. It mm-hmm. was the personality along with the music. They lived the music. It was believable. Wow. You know what I mean? Hat to the back. And you know what I mean? Even Baby, Baby, Baby that we wrote. They, I never thought that it would be like that. <laughs> you know, but they, they made it like that because they put their vibe on it. And the video was really great. You know, so they they always knew what they wanted. You know what I mean. So they were very they were innovators. Even Left Eye, when when I would talk to Lisa, you know, we'd be at the studio, 
me and her didn't talk music. She was in the health and fitness and food. Mm -hmm. I'm like a, you know, then I was vegetarian. I, I'm vegan now. So me and her would talk foods. We would talk health. And I remember before she passed, she had a book because uh, she was an artist. And she showed me a tattoo that she had uh, come up with that she was going to have put on her back. So me and her, we didn't talk music. We talked health. We just talked creative stuff. She told me about Honduras. She was going to this place called Honduras just to get away and cleanse herself. And I was like, wow, she goes, you would like it. You would like it, Daryl. You would like it. I said, man, it sounds like it. So we had a different kind of uh, relationship when we would sit and talk. You know, I, I, I admire, I, I, I really love those conversations that we had because they weren't about music. You know what I mean? It's about other things in life. Mainly we talked health because, you know, I was a health dude. You know, okay. <laughs> so that's, that was our connection. Yeah. And, yeah, I miss, miss, missed her a lot. It hurts, you know what I'm saying? And we grew up with them. You know, we all lived in a subdivision. They come and hang out and, you know, be there in the morning eating cereal. And, you know, you get to <laughs> get close to these people. It's like your, like your daughters. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you watch them come from nothing to being what they became. That's incredible, man. Come from nothing in that worldwide fame like that. That was crazy. But it, how's it, it like it us away. watching from the sidelines, seeing them blo uh, when you see the artists blow, because it's very different when you guys were doing the uh, Le Face productions with um, Paul Abdul and stuff, because, you know, you do their yeah. stuff and you move away. Yeah, but they, then... yeah, they were successful, but to see, to create someone, yeah. not create, but help to create the sound and the success, like Tony Braxton came Tony just Braxton. from Baltimore, just regular girl and, you know, zits on her face, <laughs> a, no a nobody. You know what I mean? Or TLC being a nobody. And then watch them blossom into these beautiful swans. You know what I'm saying? It's that to me, that blows me away, knowing where they started. And mm -hmm. you say, wow, I sort of had a hand in that. You know, I, I kind of helped do that. Or my song helped do that. I'll never forget we went to Hawaii. We were in Hawaii on vacation with our families. And Bobby was performing in Honolulu. <laughs> And don't be cruel, it just come out, it was blowing up. Wow. So, hey, we're gonna go see Bobby. It's like, okay. So we get on the stage and we stand on the side and they start playing rock with you. And that whole stadium venue was like, and I was just like, like those are lyrics that I wrote on a napkin. <laughs> and they're singing, the, this whole place is singing the lyrics that I made up, that Kenny and I made up in wow. Cincinnati in his little apartment. And I had these lyrics, Kim goes, what's that? I was just, these, these lyrics I had, like, rock with you. Freddie Jackson had a song called Rock Me Tonight. Rock Me Tonight, I said, yeah, yeah. I'm going to write something called Rock With You. And, uh, <laughs> Kenny, you know, Kenny all went in and put his magic dust on it like he does. But I was standing there, like, and it took everything in me not to cry. Because I'm like, wow, they're singing, like, lyrics that I wrote. And that, like, it blew me away. I was like, I was done. Wow. That's an incredible feeling to, as a songwriter, because that's yeah. what I think we live for us to pull up next to a car and somebody at the top of their lungs is singing into the road and you're just sitting there going, <laughs> <laughs> you know, pull off and go, yeah, that's, excuse my language. That's the shit. Yeah. That's the that songwriter. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's what I live for. I ain't got to be on stage. I ain't got to do no video. When I, when I'm around that, it's like, okay, yeah, that's cool. That's, that's the payoff. You know, that's that's a very cool feeling to me. So, yeah, like, to see the artist blossom like that, like Tony, Tony blew me away, man. I just, I couldn't believe it. You know, I called her the Black Barbara Streisand. That was my nickname. Because <laughs> she's just like, she came from jeans and a T-shirt. Next thing you know, she's got all these gowns and she's everywhere. She's performing everywhere with everybody. You know, and it just it just blew out. It was it was crazy. That was crazy. First, I mean, album. with all the artists, then who who would you think who 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 s s stardom and sort of rise kind of caught you off guard the most? Because you had Usher as a kid, you had TLC, you had Tony. So I mean, he's... I don't. I, I would probably have to say Tony because I remember. Uh, we were, we were kind of predicting. We would all sit around and go, hey, what do you think it's going to sell? And I was like, eh, she'll probably sell 1.2. You know, Kenny would say, ah, she might sell three. LA may say that. She's going to sell two. And that first album sold like nine. And I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, uh, but it's like you can't predict it. You can say, okay, I think it's going to do well. She's going to be okay. So 
I don't know. They all really surprised us because they all they all had so much huge success individually. So it wasn't like one had huge success and everybody was kind of mediocre. Yeah. They all had a huge, you know, worldwide success. That just even that was mind blowing to that all of them could have that success on the same label. You yeah. Know I mean? You know, it, 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 it truly was mind blowing to me. You know, it's like, wow, okay, this is great. We loved it, but it was, it was not expected, not to that degree. You know what I mean? Um, but it's very cool though, to see them as kids come in with nothing, just, you know, just <laughs> a normal person coming from wherever Tony came from Baltimore and Chili used to drive this little blue Volkswagen that leaked oil and all in the driveway. <laughs> Next thing you know, it was like, wow. You know, Tony's going by my house with her top down in her porch with her little dog. Hey, D. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God. we created a monster. Yeah. <laughs> the the, the other question they, 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 they asked us, how come you guys didn't write the Ushers, do, do the same magic you did with Tevin on Usher? Because, you know, the first album had Diddy and his crew and Devante and all that. And then right. the second was Jermaine, but you, well, you and Kenny. You know, that was the, that was the, to me, the genius of, of Kenny and LA saying, nah, we can't work on that. Mm. We need to get this person to work on that. We're not the producers to write for that. We identified the talent, but we don't mm. like TLC first album. We did baby, baby, baby. I think there was a song called shock that monkey. Maybe it was very limited what we would always do. Yeah, it wasn't like we did eight songs. You know, Dallas it was Dallas's sound. Mm -hmm. Dallas was the guy. Jermaine was the guy. So you know, you know, we could identify and go, yeah, but we don't write like that. They need to have. He needs to go over there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So like, I never, I never actually worked with Usher on on any of his albums. I wrote a Christmas song for Usher, ironically. <laughs> <laughs> during the during the LaFace days that never came out. A great Christmas song. It was packaged. I still probably have a copy back in a storage room somewhere, but I never worked on Usher's album, any album of Usher. Wow. You know, people think, no, I didn't. He was on the label, but I wasn't one of the producers because he went with the other people that had the what he needed. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? And so, like I said, we 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 could identify, well, we don't want to pigeonhole them and do this kind of song, do these yeah. kind of songs. You know, we knew where we fit in. Yeah. Like you said, we knew where we fit. We could work on Tony. You know what I'm saying? We could do a song or two with TLC. Kenny wrote, you know, Red Light Special. Great song. He could write a song or two in that vein. Was, okay, that's it. That's my contribution. And go, yeah. you know, get with the other guys to do the bulk of it. So that's kind of like what was going on kind of back then. You know, oh. just like, okay, do I work on it? Can I work on it? It's like, no, I don't write rap music. I ain't working on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, uh, Outcasts know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, yeah, Rico him up. And, <laughs> yeah. and all their whole crew. Okay, go do y'all's thing. Great yeah. group. Right? I ain't got nothing to contribute. They're just on the label. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because so, uh, even Donnell, I did say, you know, he said the one regret he had is he never got to work with you. And, and I never and, got to work with Donnell. And I wish I had. And I don't know why. I think it. I think when I broke away from the face and left the office and had silent partner, I was, I was into what I was doing mm. as my own producer, writer, trying to establish myself, trying to make Kenny and LA proud and start my own thing. I left the nest. It was time for me to go and leave the nest. And mm. so I ended up doing, I may not have worked on that, but I did things on my own that I wouldn't have worked on if I stayed, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, I work with SWV, I work with Lisa Fisher, I work with Aretha by myself, I work with Curtis Mayfield by myself, I work with Drew Hill. I did a, a nice little body of work on yeah. my own to establish myself. So I missed out on a lot of those things that were going on. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it was, it was, it was give and take. You yeah. know what I mean? Uh, but it was just, I was, I was away during a lot of that. You know, there was one Tony album that I didn't even. I don't think that I worked on maybe a couple of them. I just, I wasn't around. I wasn't, wow. I wasn't there, you know? So uh, that's why it was great to work on love, marriage and divorce. Cause I had not worked. I didn't work on a Christmas album with her. She called me to work on a Christmas album like 10 years ago. But other than that, I had worked on a secular album. So love, marriage and divorce was great. Cause I love working with Tony. You know, I love yeah. her voice, love recording her voice. 
So, but I hadn't worked with Tony in, in a long time, you know. The, the the Usher single for the Christmas album that never got released. What happened to it? Nothing. It had never. It it never. I thought it was going to be on the LaFace Family Christmas album, mm. and I don't know. That's actually a really good question because it was a really good song. It was a really good song. I remember it, and uh, but it it wasn't on the LaFace Family Christmas album because we had Tony, we had the Goody Mob on there, we had TLC was on there, of course. And I don't know. It's just one of those things that didn't, that ne it never did develop or come out. You know, oh. it never did. So yeah. Did Did you work on Pink? Because somebody said you. Yes, did you early on. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. Alex asks about that. Yeah. I don't know. You have to look it up. I couldn't tell. Choice you. or was she in a girl group? Or they, was they were. They were Choice. Oh, they, were three, they were three white girls. They were Choice, and so I went in the studio with Choice, and I did. I think I started with them first at the face, and we did one record. And then later on, you know, Kenny in L.A. was like, well, they just the other girls don't fit with her. Mm. You know what I mean? Because she was, you know, she was pink <laughs> back then trying to be in a pure white bread trio <laughs> singing group. You know what I mean? And uh, I remember she came up to my office once and she goes, you know, she goes, she put her leg up, goes, I don't want no white boys in my video. And I was like, <laughs> really? No, I don't want no white boys in my video. I was like, this girl is different. <laughs> I think it wasn't soon after that, like LA said, or Kenny said, she's gonna be rock. She's gonna do a rock album. I'm like, okay, yeah, I can see that. <laughs> but she knew what she was. She was, you know what I mean? It's a great voice. I, I don't know what album, I think it's the very first one. Yeah, maybe. yeah. I, I, you know, I don't think it was a hit or anything, but I loved her. I loved Alicia. Alicia was fun. She was, she was crazy. She was fun. <laughs> so talented. She did some backgrounds for me, actually, on a couple of my projects. Yeah, she did backgrounds. I think on, she may have sang on Shantae and Kenny Lattimore. I, I was doing a duet album of remakes, but she sang on a couple of things for me. Wow. Great, as you know, great voice. Yeah, great, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, great voice. And I haven't seen her since back then. I've never run into her. You know, I'm so happy for her success because once again, she I knew she had that talent. Wow. You know what I mean? I didn't see it being a rock star. Yeah. But, you know what I mean? I didn't yeah. see that, but the voice was there. Her voice was incredible. Just, I was like, my God, you know, so wow. strong and just in pitch and always hitting the notes and, you know, but yeah, I forgot about Alicia and Choice. Yeah. Yeah. It no, it was, it was Alex who asked that. Yeah. And they asked, the always, the other question they always asked again was Jermaine Jackson. You had a Jackson. Jermaine Jackson. You? Yeah. What Great happened? Album. Great album. There's a, there's a couple of songs on there. One song in particular called Don't You Deserve Someone. Oh my God. Look it up. He kills it. Beautiful song. Beautiful song. You know, my favorite song on the album. Just didn't happen. Wow, that's, that's didn't amazing. Happen. And I love working with him. He was so much fun. He was funny. I go pick him up at his house. He's renting this house in Buckhead. And I go pick him up, bring him to the studio, take him home. And uh, he was, he, that dude was funny. <laughs> I, I, I used to tell Michael, I'll, I'll kick your ass, you little mother. <laughs> Jermaine. He was so funny. Jermaine was so funny. That dude would keep us in stitches all the whole And I went to Los Angeles and he took me. I went to Havenhurst, the house, and I went in and I met the mom, met Catherine. He introduced oh, wow. me to Catherine and he showed me all the stuff, you know, all the stuff Michael had done. They had it in a, like, actually, like a, like you're in a jewelry store. <laughs> you know, all the awards and Grammys are all in these big cases and, and off the living room. That, that couch right there is where I quit. I sat right there on that couch and I told my father, I quit. That's the spot right there. I'm like, that's cool, man. He's a great guy. Funny guy. He's funny. Jermaine, talented. Yeah. You know, a lot of old Motown stories. And mm -hmm. took me around, showed me everybody's bedroom, Michael's room, and everybody's room where he slept at Havenhurst. And funny guy. Talented too, though. You know, he had he had really good sex, uh, uh, success as a solo artist. Yeah, you know, yeah we, really we, songs. we were really, surprised he, did really he, well. he, he didn't do do well. Then now people mm -hmm. ask, did, was he upset when you guys went to work with Michael on the Dangerous album? And then because he was signed to you guys. Remember. No, I don't, I don't okay. remember him being upset. I don't remember that. I don't think he was. Okay. Per se. I, can't, I don't, Kenny would know. Kenny's memory is always better than mine. <laughs> I don't think he was upset. I think Michael called Kenny 
in LA because we were working with Jermaine. Uh, That's what I think. That was just my own. Mm. But I was excited to go. And was <laughs> yeah. So I didn't care. I was yeah. Like Michael Jackson. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. You know. Yeah. So, but I think there was a little that little camaraderie because Michael was, you know, Michael is he's, you know, he, he's manipulative. He <laughs> uses his power. You know, he uses his power. He's the only person who wouldn't come to Atlanta. Everybody else would come to Atlanta, but he wouldn't wow. come to Atlanta. So we went out there for two weeks. That was it. We gave him two weeks. And it was, it'll be in the book. It's, it's, a, hell of, it's a hell of a story. One of the chapters will say, Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. <laughs> Yo, man, you have to, do you have to come up there? Then yeah, it, the- is, it, is a, it is a good story. And uh, <laughs> I'll tell you, just a quick, when we met him, uh, he came in and we were talking which two guys are from Indiana? Those, wow. you two guys are from Indiana. I can tell you a sense of humor. You and you are from Indiana. I said, yep, from Indiana, just like you. Oh, you know? oh yeah, yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah. Funny guy. It was quite the experience. I, I, don't, I will not give that away because it's a, it's a hell of a story. I mean, growing up in, in Gary, Indiana, was, sorry, it, the, being from, um, in, um, from the same place, were, were they always, did they seem, did they seem far you know, do they seem big? Well, see, the thing about Gary, Indiana, it was north. It was just that far from Chicago. We lived in Indianapolis, which was probably, I don't know, two hours away. So it wasn't even the same city. It was just the same state. But okay. Gary was up north where the steel mills were, mm. right at right at right at Chicago. You know, so it was Indiana, but it wasn't in Indianapolis where Kenny and I grew up. Okay. You know? Okay. Uh, so it's just the it's just that we we both were. We were all from Indiana, you know, okay. from the Midwest. Still Midwest, though. Still yeah, relative. Yeah. It's yeah. the Midwest. But, uh, you know, uh, but it's, it's a, I was glad I got the opportunity. It didn't turn out as well as I thought it would. Yeah, it, was, it was that. great to be in the room with him, to talk to him, to work with him, to be around him, even though mm. there were some challenging days <laughs> that I'll talk about in the book. But I, 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 I was grateful for the opportunity to get to go to work, mm. you know, to work, to work, to work with him along with, of course, it was Kenny and LA with the producers. I was there as a writer. Yeah. So uh, I was on the couch, Yeah. You know, but, he, but, you know, I talked a couple of times with him, you know, so it was, it, it, I'm glad that I did it, you know, to mm. get to meet him. Never thought I would even be in the same room. So yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was cool. And then the song that we did that he didn't use, the slave to when the rhythm. Away, yeah, when he passed away and Sony was putting this album together, they did use the song. So that was kind of cool. Yeah. Know? Yeah, it was yeah. A, it was a, it was an okay song. Yeah, we 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 wait for the book. The SWV, so they came out with their um their Derby album and then they didn't for some reason they weren't working as much with Brian and on their follow-up album. Um and and you worked with them. What was did was how was that like? Uh, working with SWV on, on I loved uh, it. They were great. I wish I could have done more. I, went, I don't even know how I got that gig. Somebody called. I went to New York because I worked in New York. I wrote the song and they loved the song. I went up to record it. It was a song called "You Are My Love." Really sweet ballad. It wasn't a hit. It wasn't a single. But it was a great. It was like they told me when I saw them once. They said it was like actually one of their favorite songs. And I was uh, backstage at a Mariah Carey show. We were back there, and Mariah was playing it. And wow. she goes, Daryl Simmons, this is one of my favorite songs. And she was playing it in her dressing room. And I was like, wow, that's like, I'm honored. <laughs> because, you know, that song didn't see the light, light of day, but Mariah found it and she, she loved it. You know, so that's kind of like, it was a hit to Mariah. So I'll, t- I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 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 It's, a, it's a sweet song. It's, it's, it's actually one of, a lot of my favorite songs aren't the hit songs. You know what I mean? Like, You Are My mm-hmm. Love is a really sweet song that I really I really love it that Coco just man, she that girl, Jesus. <laughs> that girl can sing, man. You know, and then the girls with their harmonies, just a great solid group. You know, they they do have a sound. Yeah. You know, Taj and Lili contributed a lot to the backgrounds. And it's, it's, it, it was fun to work with them, just a one off, you know. So great. I, I like the experience sometimes. It's not about the hit. Sometimes it's just the experience of me. So like we've been friends forever. You know, she actually came in town and sang on something uh, for me that she was doing with Kevin. And, you know, so you become friends with people. It's about the relationships, not always yeah. about, oh, we didn't write a hit. It's like, 
you know, it's like now, but we became friends, you know what I mean? From yeah. life. So a lot of great experiences, even though we didn't have a hit, you know. Um, so yeah, that's that was that was a really a fun session. And you know, so yeah, I like that song a lot. You know. you know, as we as as we wrap up, you you um you you've said it. Um, you mean the world to me is your favorite song. Yeah, that's probably my top song, and then it goes probably can we talk rock witches, my 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 into the road maybe, but uh. So yeah. you you mean what what about you mean the world to me that that you really like because it it um you, was there it's, anything uh, special about it? It's the way it sounds. Mm. It's the way it sounds. It's Tony's delivery. Uh, it's 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 a combination of the sound and Tony's uh, vocal delivery that I just love. I really mm. it's just something about the it's like can we talk? It's something about the sound of it, and you know, because Kenny did the music. It's something about the way he created the music that's just so identifiable, even when it comes on, you know, you know, Tevin hasn't sung a note. And when you hear, it's just like, damn, that's like a smash. And I ain't heard a note, you know what I mean? And I don't know, it's just little things like that that I listen for that, you know, normal people wouldn't really listen to it. But it's, it's usually for me a sound, you know, a, an ambiance or a mood when I hear it, you know what I mean? And that's, those two records have that to me. Mm. Uh, it's the grand piano on You Mean the World to Me. I think a guy named Vance Taylor played, he ended up playing with Frankie Beverly, the way he played the acoustic piano, where he would, we would always let someone come in and replay. Okay. Kenny and I write and play, but I don't call myself a piano player. Mm. You know, I'll call in, I used to call in Vance, or I'll call Mario, hey Mario, play it better than me, because those guys are real piano players and the way they would embellish it, like, oh my God. You know, it's the way it's supposed to sound. So it's like the the grand piano and Tony's performance, and, you know, the melodies that Kenny comes up with. And then, you know, I'm, I'm a lyric man, so I love. Oh, so he made it okay. Lyrics, you know what I mean? It's always something, just a little bit of something that pulls me in. You know, yeah. that's what pulls me in on that. That's what pulls me in on Can We Talk? You know, the beginning of My 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 with Kenny um, Kenny G's saxophone. A lot of people don't know that's Kenny G on soprano sax. Wow. When he first comes in, Gerald Busby hated it because in the beginning, <laughs> Kenny, had a, Kenny had a synthesizer line that Gerald loved. And when we recorded it, you know, decided to use Kenny G. And Gerald hated it. What happened to the little synthesizer line you had on the demo? You guys ruined it. It's like, no, nah, <laughs> no, he didn't. That's Kenny G. You know, so just even when Kenny G comes in, before Johnny even sings, it's like, it's like yeah, it's like the mood of that it's like you see mm. the girl walking in with her red dress her hair's down her lipstick on you just see it it's like damn that's a bad record <laughs> I, did that. I turned that up that's like man did you know it was going to be a hit though when, when, when you were writing it yeah absolutely you know so those certain ones you know you don't know how big but you know when it feels good and you get chill bumps like like that, it's like, oh man. Yeah, you know, you know, you could you you know, but you don't know the number, you don't know how big. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. that's a smash. You go, okay, that's a smash. That's in there. That but then also Johnny's J- Johnny's delivery. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're exactly right. Johnny was the perp, and he was young when he sang that. Wow. He wasn't a grown, grown man, but he had <laughs> so- that was the problem back then. He had that grown man voice. You know what I'm saying? When he sang with Stacey Lattisaw, but this dude was like teenager singing like, <laughs> you know, and so it was the perfect marriage. Now we've written that mature song where his voice can shine. The perfect song for that grown man, mature voice. Like I said, his, his greatest song to date. You know what I mean? Ain't no yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's his signature song. It's that my 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 is his signature song. There's some other great songs, Fair Weather yeah. Friend, mm. you know, what Jimmy and Terry did, Rub You the Right Way. But my my my. Mm. When you Man. think of those classics, you have Superwoman and My My My. I mean, do you mm-hmm. do you think which I mean I mean Karen, I mean, a lot of us were disappointed that you guys didn't do her sophomore album. Um, I think LA 
explain the whole fallout with Benny Medina and, and how that yeah. that prevented yeah. and stuff. But watching, from I hated the... it too because it was fun working with him. Me and her, it was like it was. We worked great together. We wrote. We sang backgrounds. You know, her and I sang backgrounds on Fairway the Friend. That's me and her singing on oh. me and her and Kenny singing on Fairway the Friend. So yeah, I hated not working with her again. It's like, damn, why not? That's it. All the success we had when I working on another album, you know. It's like, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Wow. things happen. You know, business. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that, you know. I mean, and, and I think that's what that will. I I do hope. Anyway, just just as we wrap up, I mean, guys, um, the Christmas album, uh, it it is it is out. It is a special album. Um, as I said, one Christmas wish is my favorite song on the album because we're, where's we're the album? Um, yeah, yeah. It's in it's in my wife's car because that's the only place that <laughs> yeah because that's okay. the only car that has a CD player. So yeah, every, got, yeah so right. throughout the day, yeah. Player, yeah. So gotcha. so okay, it. Cool. it, it it, it's in there, um, cool, but um, but I, I I will keep I will keep pushing. It. I mean, until you come up with a yeah, video, um, it's yeah, yeah. Um, I'll, I'll sure. make sure everyone everyone. But I have shared the link on 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 this on the, on the YouTube channel so people can okay, just great. click onto it and, and go straight in there. Okay, cool. um, it's um, yeah. Until you know, hopefully, you will get to see. A, a, an unplugged version of of the album performed by, <laughs> by the singer. Your idea, not <laughs> yeah. mine, people. His idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit him up. Ask him when is it gonna happen. Don't hit me up. Because what what you what you could easily do just you get it filmed up. Your, your your kids will film it up and then it'll be right. posted out. Right. And then it's like, wow, look at the visuals for the. It's because yeah, it's yeah. a beautiful song. Beautiful. I mean, Thank that's you, man. A, appreciate it. I appreciate you pushing song. it and letting people know. I appreciate that, man. Having me on too. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. No, and you know, so um, definitely, it'd be great just to see. Yeah, when a video comes out, we we will premiere it as as well. But if not, okay. if it's a concert out, we'll do the same. It's um, all right, man. <laughs> it's it's always it's but it's it's really it's really great that you've you know everyone's really always always thanks you for you know for the stories and and for the work that yeah, you've done. Cool. And, yeah, good stories. And, I, don't, I don't mind telling a few, but I got to save it for the book. So that's the next. Yeah. Yes, project next couple of years maybe. Yeah, it may take a minute. This <laughs> yeah. took a while, so you know. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, you know, but, uh, yeah. I think fi- the final, final, final thing: soundtrack. What would be your favorite soundtrack? Because I've been, I'm running, I've been running a daily poll for the past. My favorite weeks. soundtrack of all time. Favorite soundtrack, yeah. That you think of, yeah. Easy, you, which... Superfly. Okay. Birds Mayfield. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. Purple Rain a second. Okay. Jimmy will say Purple Rain first, and I get it. Yeah, it's uh, but for me, you know, Curtis Mayfield, Superfly. Because you think about the ones in the 70s, you had Superfly, you had you had Car Wash, you had um, yeah, I, yeah, you had Lady Sings the Blues, you've, you've, yep. you've got yep. um, Shaft. There were some good ones, there were some good ones, but what Curtis did relatable to the music and, and the movie, and Freddie's Dead, and you know, I don't know, it's just for me, <laughs> Superfly, man. Yeah. You know, Ron O'Neill, Curtis Mayfield, Sheila Frazier. Heck yeah, I remember it all. <laughs> I remember it all. See, my generation is the, 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 no matter what I put up there, it's um, Exhale. That's the one that wins exhale? every, wow. yeah, wins it's every, a great one. it wins it's every poll. I think that they, I think yeah. it's just, for for those of the nineties, those who yeah, it is the nineties. Those in the nineties, they that's right. that's their favorite album. So right. if you put it I up get again, it. yes, different generation. Yes, you generation. know, you're right. But all of those soundtracks are all great in every right. You know, Isaac Hayes, well, I think the first what black person win an Academy Award for mm. I think Shaft or the scoring yeah. or the mm. or the, the the soundtrack, which was incredible, which is a incredible soundtrack. You know, but something about Curtis, just the rawness, mm. the R and Bness of it. I'm R and B dude. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just uh, I don't know. Songs are just they just seem raw. They seem like they were done in like one take. Yeah. You know, you know, okay, let's do it. One take. Yeah, that's that's great. You know, you think so, he gets the the the, the recognition that no, um, no, he yeah. doesn't. He doesn't. I, I've said that in interviews that Curtis Mayfield was a genius. And I got to work with him when he was wow. paralyzed in a wheelchair. And oh, you know, once again, we did it wasn't a hit, but to be around him. And to, I would go to his bedside to write. You know, he lived in Atlanta. I'd go to his bedside to write. We wrote together. Then we recorded the song, brought him to the studio. And uh, a great story. He said, OK, you have to lean me back in order for me to have enough wind to sing. So we actually would take 
the wheelchair and uh, uh oh, lost you. Sorry about that. So we would take the wheelchair and lean the wheelchair back. So he was like this. Wow. He took the microphone, and aimed it. He said that's the only way he could get enough air to sing. Wow. Yeah. But Curtis was a genius to me. He was a genius. I, I, I loved him as a man, talking to him. He was very quietly political. If you listen to a lot of the songs, he followed what Martin was doing. You know, we're a winner. And some of those songs were going along with what Martin was doing. He was supporting that through his music. If you listen to the songs, you know, mm. he was, he's a genius to me. He, and he does not get that credit. Yeah. yeah. Curtis Mayfield I mean, was, was incredible to me. A lot of guys back there, Curtis Mayfield, Leon Silvers, Norman Whitfield. Those guys were geniuses, man, with no auto tune and all. No, there's no real, you know, the technology and the yeah, records yeah. they made. Leon Silvers was incredible. But Norman he, he, Whitfield, he gets Carl the, he gets, Yeah, he gets the, yeah. you know, for the being on Solar and 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 and, yeah, yeah, and, and, yeah, and a lot of yeah, things from there. Is. And then Norman I, Whitfield I with Temptations. Guys. Yeah. Yeah, I admired them for their songwriting back then when I was really younger and I would listen to what they were doing. And these guys are like really incredible, you know. But still didn't get their just due like they no. should. And and I only remembered um I only only remembered um Curtis Mayfield when uh, Ice T came out with the Superfly. I was like, and, and that's oh, how no, I you gotta go backwards. You gotta that's go how back. I, that's how I got to yeah. know Curtis Mayfield was when Ice T came out with yeah, that. Exactly. Album. That was his that was his highlight big moment. But if you go before then, even when he was in the impressions, you know what I mean? Mm. You know, he was a, a guy that sang in a singing group but played guitar. I thought that was odd. <laughs> you know what I mean? To have a singing group, nobody played an instrument in a singing group, but Curtis yeah. Mayfield played guitar in the Impressionist and, wow. and stayed a guitar player. You know, I thought that was like, I like that, you know? So, no, but he had songs be be before that, you know? Uh, People get ready, there's a train a coming. Don't need no ticket, just get on board. You know, we're a winner, got to keep striving, keep pushing. This looks at those records, the lyrics, man. It was very side by side with what Martin was doing. It's like he was writing the soundtrack to what Martin was doing to me, quietly. Why do you think yeah. he, he he doesn't get you no? Know, because we don't talk about don't him as much. I don't know. I, good question. Very good question. I don't know. You know, I really don't know because that guy he was he was incredible to me, really, and not just because I worked with him. I admired. I worked with him later years. I, I admired him when I was young. You know. So, yeah, he just doesn't get that credit that he really deserves. You know, great musician, songwriter, producer, arranger. He did all that stuff, man. But how you did he get, how did you get to work with you? Did he call you? Or? Somebody called and said, hey, Curtis Mayfield wants to work with you. I was like, what? Are you crazy? <laughs> Heck yeah. Went to his house because he was, you know, he'd be in the bed. And so I want you to come up with something like this. And so I came up with a track and we actually wrote it together. You know, I didn't write it at all. We wrote it together and. It was a great experience for me, you know what I'm saying? To work with somebody that I admired, you know, I was honored, <laughs> you know what I mean? It was like, wow, me? Sure, I don't know why you called me, you know? But yeah, one of, one of my highlights of my career, once again, even though we didn't write a hit, yeah, yeah, yeah. meeting him, writing with him, talking with him, you know what I mean? That was like an honor to like, damn, that's Curtis Mayfield, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Same thing for Elton John, we didn't write a hit, but me and Elton became, Daryl, tacos, nine o'clock. Nice. <laughs> okay, Elton. It's Elton John, dude. <laughs> you know? Great yeah. relationships. The story says to meet somebody, become friend, call him a friend. You know what I mean? So good stories. Gotta go, man. I'm hungry. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta go eat. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Daryl, uh, so it's great. Um, Make You Do Right by Karen White. That was you, right? That's a good record. It was good. Not a hit. It was fun. Yeah. It was good. It was a good record. Yeah, good record. So it was cool. So guys, we, we thanks. Uh, we, we want to thank Daryl for taking time to talk to us again. His album is out now. Um, I'm going to repost the link. Um, yeah, repost and everything. Let them know. And hopefully we'll, we'll get to see the uh, unplugged version of the album with the Your amazing unplugged singers. <laughs> yeah. Your project. Yeah, yeah. But it's great. Right, Thanks, Dale. We'll Thanks, keep man. in touch. All right. Take, Take care. care. Hey, guys. I want to talk to you about being a member of Halftime Chat. As a member, you get the full interviews on day one. You actually get some exclusive interviews, some interviews that don't get broadcast. You get some behind the story stuff, you get some unedited stuff, quite a lot of things that will be happening for our members. 
There's been a lot of you who's been members and supporting us. I really appreciate every single one of you. But as I said, just for the rest of you, think about joining the Halftime Chat membership and just see the fun that you get just being part of this growing community, celebrating R&B, celebrating hip hop, celebrating old school. So, but thanks for watching and being part of this. Take care.